Hi, my name is Larry Lucero. Today we have episode four of Life Treasure. And with that, we have a very special person that we want to meet. His name is Lee Donahue Sr. Lee Donahue used to be the former police chief of Honolulu. But in 1994, he was working with another educator named Amy Abi from Apollo High School. And they created a very special program called Kickstart. Now, what is Kickstart? And how has it made a difference to many of the kids that we have today? Let's find out. Can I have your name and uh, as I know that you're the president of the Kickstart program, uh, can you tell me in general an introduction of yourself? Well, my name is Lee Donahue and uh, born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, <clears throat> went to the public school system, graduated from McKinley High School, um, worked in a construction trade until I went into the police force when I was 21. And uh, <clears throat> when I was about 14, I uh, started my first martial arts school, and that was Okazaki's uh, Koden Kan Jiu Jitsu Gym down in. Uh, where, and uh, the building is still there, it's on Hotel Street. And that's where I started, and then when I joined the police department, I uh, <clears throat> became a member of the judo team. And then in 1965 or 66, I started karate. And, uh, and I've been with karate ever since. Uh, I've had other types of training, like in uh, Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. I've had uh, <clears throat> Tai Chi, a lot of Tai Chi. And so, you know, it's kind of a, and I've been doing it ever since. So that's many, many years have gone by. So, And then we started, uh, and that's, that's what it's all about. And 1994, or 93, Amy Abi was retiring from uh, Waipawa High School and I knew her and uh, I had just come back from Japan. And uh, while in Japan, they knew of my uh, involvement with the martial arts. So what they did, uh, <clears throat> they did, I did learn from them that all police officers in Japan, uh, when you graduate, you have to have your first degree black belt right. in either kendo or judo. Now this is part of the, uh, when you went to Japan, I understand you want to learn about the uh, Kuban system? Kuban system. Right. Yeah. Tell me what is the Kuban system? The Kuban system is um, how the police do their policing in different uh, districts. Uh -huh. And basically there are police stations that are you know, strategically placed and they're uh, very visible and the public can, has public access to them uh, 24 hours a day. So, and, and it's whether it's a business district or whether it's a residential district, the Kobans are all throughout Japan. So this is what we went to study because we were looking at maybe building a Koban system within Waikiki oh. because we have so many uh, Japanese tourists. Right. And that's when you, when you went to Japan and just about majority of the policemen had a black belt in karate or karate? No, it wasn't karate, it was judo or uh, judo? kendo. Okay, you know, so. and uh, you also mentioned, uh, well you didn't mention it, but in the research, and most of these police officers also did, uh, they contribute to the community. 
and uh, they help a lot of the young people over there by training. Right, so what they do is when they get out to their stations, wherever they're stationed at, they would invite the uh, youngsters from the neighborhood to come in and work out with them in either judo or kendo. And it was their way of building up a camaraderie with the, okay. the youth in the neighborhood and uh, also for character development of the youngsters. So when I saw that, that's when I said, you know, maybe this is something we can do back home. So I came back and Chief Mike Nakamura was the chief. Uh -huh. And I told him and he says, well, go ahead, you know, go ahead and go with it. And then I knew that Amy Abi was retiring. So I asked her if she would help me and uh, she said yes. So we both co-founded it. And she started the education side and I started the uh, karate side. Okay. So this is a different program because most training is just regular karate or judo, but you're adding something else, which is an element of education here right. and, and character. Right. Right? So this is probably what you inspired you to start this program. Right. So if, if someone to ask you, what is the mission of the Kickstart program, what would you say? Uh, it's to build uh, leaders within our community. Uh, we take youngsters in there from uh, the age of 6 to 18 and we work with them and uh, the whole the whole program is built on leadership and values right and uh, so you know and if you uh, <coughs> you look at our, our black belts here all of them have come through this program you know and they're now back teaching they're there are uh, it's amazing isn't it yeah they're contributing members of uh -huh. the community teachers you know they they also are uh, you know work for the for the army and you know, they're in the Air Force. So we have, they, they have done very well. There's about 14 of them right now that are consistently uh, training with us to help the younger ones. But they, uh, they all came through the, uh, the Kickstart program when it was started. Was there any specific requirements as far as the kind of kids that uh, uh, were part of the program? That when we had? first started, we, uh, we had a, a contact at August Iron. So okay. Amy Abi wanted the, uh, the, the uh, group that we were missing was the uh, <coughs> at-risk athletes, you know, because uh, a lot of people, they get a lot of things going for them in the schools and with the different programs, but the at-risk uh, athletes were the ones that were being missed. So uh, she, you know, push this part of the program and then uh, our first group that came in um, most of them were identified by the teachers mm -hmm. that they're at risk athletes you know, so it at was already a challenge that they're involved with a lot of not too best situations you might say yeah and a lot of them i mean the, the, the kids themselves they were great but you know, they come from some tough backgrounds. Right, you know, right. So. And we're talking about like Waipahu. Right. W were there an issue as far as uh, the young kids being involved in gangs at that time, or is it still is today? Or uh, we've had very few, maybe you know, just a handful that uh, were in the gangs that came to us, but then decided to stay with the gangs. But there was only like five that I know of. So you've given these kids hope, in other words, right. that there's an alternative way yes. uh, as far as life. Mm -hmm. Now, as a kid becomes part of this program, um, as, as for example, it starts here, uh, I understand uh, to get a gi, you have to earn it. There's no free lunch. You have to meet the requirements of the program. You have to work at it. Right. You know, uh, when you become a member of the program, there, there's there are no fees charged, uh -huh. you know, and uh, even so what, what it is when you first come in three months, you have to be here for three months straight before we issue you a gi, a uniform. And then from there, you know, they go on and if they, uh, they enter any of the uh, tournaments, uh -huh. you know, we pay for that. We have uh, teams that travel. This year we have a team that's traveling to Sacramento to compete and we pay everything, they, they pay nothing. But they give a lot of work. They're, they're out here, you know, at the gym, constantly trying to better themselves. So they have to really work hard to achieve yes. their belts and their practice That's and right. everything else. Yeah. Now, one of the most important things that what you expect of the kids is the concept of bylaws, that they have to, uh, I won't say the word ingrained, but they have to 
uh, follow. Can you give me an idea what these bylaws are? Well, the bylaws are just uh, <clears throat> tenants, short tenants that uh, we repeat. There's 16 of them, and we repeat them, and we, we ask the students that you must try and follow these bylaws and live by these bylaws. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> so uh, some of the bylaws are very easy. You know, like never use any profane language. Right. That's one. Or never say in one house what you hear in another. Never speak ill of the absent. That's, that's another one, you know. So uh, never misuse these arts or use them for self-gain. So they, they repeat these, you know, they and come up. And these are good value systems for the upcoming adults as they get into the... Yeah, world. because I believe in the martial arts, what you're trying to do is to be able to have these youngsters seek the perfection of character. And that's, you have to do that. Through the, through the bylaws, you know, through the values of the system. Now, in the when the kids, it's here Tuesdays and Thursdays, is that true? And when they come over here, there's actually three phases of it that you, the kids go through. One is education, two is the karate training, and then three is the guidance. And I know you have specific times. So, can you tell me about the, the reason why you want to emphasize education to the kids? Well, you know, I think education uh, levels the playing field for everybody. Right. You know, uh -huh. I, mean, you know I mean, you don't have education, you're not going to go very far in this life. So, uh, and that's, that's why I always tell them, you know, the education part is very important. You want to be able to level the playing field so when you go out there, you can compete. The other part of it is they do find that they can compete when they go out and, and test themselves in tournaments, you know, and they find that they're going against other good schools and that they can compete. So this is a thing I'm trying to build within them that you can compete and that what you're trying to do is live your, bio, live your values and seek perfection of character. Now, the kids actually, you have counselors to help them do their homework, or at least assist them, is that true? We had that, we had that, and uh, but what we did is uh, we changed the program somewhat uh, where the, we say the bylaws, everybody has to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have to, we use that at the end of class. So we make sure that everybody's there and then we sit them down for the final 15 minutes or so. Right. You know. And that's the last part. Now, after you've done the education, uh, do you still actually do the education period? Do they... We no, we uh, we don't. What we do, we've uh, replaced that with uh, uh, enhancement, enhancements, music enhancement. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So what what it is? Uh, one of our instructors he instructs the kids with uh, keyboards right. so that they can learn to play yeah. pianos, and so that's that's taken that part of it. And then they come into the dojo and then we finish up with the bylaws. That's interesting because music is a lot of fun. People, the kids can express themselves right. through music. Right. Yeah. So after they do the music, then they have the karate training. Right? right. And that's for about maybe almost an hour. Oh, it's about an hour and a half, yeah. Yeah. And they learn the, the traditional Japanese uh, Okinawan uh, karate or, or karate. Right. Okay. And um, this is where the connection between the students learn about mind, body, and spirit of being able to, to use a discipline, is, is that, uh, what's the most important value system that the kids learn in, in learning this, the, the karate system? Well, I, th I think it's, it's all tied together, yeah. Uh -huh. um, the, the karate part teaches character development. Okay. You know, we develop the character there. Uh -huh. But then the bylaws is where we, <clears throat> we hit home with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, perfection of character you know so that they know that <clears throat> there are there are rules to live by you know and and when you try and live by these rules after the karate training do you still have that guidance where the concepts will talk about certain concepts as far as the values of life and well we have you know the, the like i said the last about half hour is, is dedicated to the bylaws oh okay yeah, so Okay. And what happens is that uh, the young, the uh, one instructor will get up there and he, he leads them uh, through the bylaws and they'll choose maybe one bylaw uh, for the day okay. and then they'll... For example, what kind of bylaw? Are we well, you know, it's like it could be any one, like, uh, you know, <laughs> never say in one house what you hear in another, never okay. speak all of the absent. And from that, 
They ask the kids to break up into groups and to break it down as to what it means to them and then to come back and then they have to come up in front of the class and, <coughs> and uh, discuss what they, what they discussed in their groups and why they believe in this bylaw. Now, one of, if I'm not mistaken, uh, one of the things that you train the kids is for them to self-express themselves, to become more assertive. Mm -hmm. Is that also the, the process here? That is a process, and uh, at the end of class, we usually have uh, what we call a brave soul. We'll ask for the brave soul to step forward, and they'll volunteer, and they'll they come up. They all volunteer? Well, not all. <laughs> but there's a certain group that volunteers, and uh -huh. they come up, and they're not afraid to, not afraid to. to speak. You know, in fact, one time um, we had a uh, news reporter out here doing a story on us, and they were amazed at the kids, how the kids are just willing to come up and speak. You know, see, you don't see that you know, right, right. amongst youngsters. It, it means they have more self-confidence in right. themselves. Right. Yeah, that's great. You know, uh, it, it takes a great staff uh, uh, that is able to support a program like this, mm -hmm. you know. And I know many of, of the people in your staff, can, can you give me a description of uh, the, the staff, uh, the people that are helping out in, in this Well, program? you know, we have uh, <clears throat> uh, one is an educator. He's going for his master's right now in education. Okay. His, his child is in the program, but he came through the program, you know, he himself. So he's now, he's got, he'll probably get his master's uh, this very shortly. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, he's an educator at a couple And then um, we have uh, Christy, who is a female. She's an Air Force recruiter. And she's been in the Air Force since she left uh, high school. You know, and she's made a career out of the Air Force, so she, you know, as a recruiter. And then <clears throat> we have um, uh, Marvin. Marvin is one of our instructors. And what he does, he, he actually got one of our scholarships and went to trade school and now is working as uh, in, in the electronic field, you know, so, you know, he's come back and he's teaching. We have Alex. Alex is uh, through our program. He has, uh, he's a pastor, uh -huh. and then he has his own church, and he is now also working in the construction business. So these are some of them, just That's some amazing, of them. amazing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now you've also done not just working with the kids, but you also work with the public. You do uh, community outreach as well. You've done uh, different projects with the community. Can you give me an idea of some of the projects that you've done? You mean with Kickstart? Yeah. yeah. Well, what we've done is uh, we've all often been asked if we can, uh, and, and I believe that you know they, they have to give back too. So what we do is we have community service projects. Okay. And we ask them that they have to come out uh, one of the most recent is like on Kunia Road, we have cleanups along the roadway. You'll see the signs that said uh, adopted by Kickstart Karate. <laughs> yeah, it's out there, but you know, and we have the parents out there helping clean that highway. Uh, that's one. We have the marsh that's right in front of the academy. Uh, our kids have gone out there to help clean up the marsh. You know, so we have these community service projects all over. We have them with uh, the Karakai Fun Run. Okay. And uh, the kids are out there on the streets passing out flowers as the runners go by, you know. So these are the types of things that we want them to understand that they have to give back to the community. You just can't be getting everything free. Right. Yeah. One last question is, is that is how important is the family uh, to support or be involved with this particular type of program? Oh, you mean the, the family of the children? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's very important, and uh, we've been lucky. There's been a lot of support from the parents. Okay. And uh, this whole program is financed by one fundraiser that we have a year, and that's called a Taste of Kickstart. And we have people like Roy Yamaguchi, Alan Wong, and these people helping to provide food for our fundraisers. And we have it out in Hawaii Kai, and we normally have about 250, 300 people that come out. They buy tickets and then they, they get to enjoy the food, they get to enjoy the entertainment. But all of the money that comes in goes up, comes in to support this program. So the parents is, is very important as far as uh, involvement with the Kickstart program. Yeah, because you know, first of all, 
they have to support the children here. Right. You know, mm -hmm. if there's no support, then the child is not going to do well. And then they have to support what we need. And basically, our big fundraiser is where we, we uh, tap them once a year to come out and help. Well, I want to personally thank you for spending the time and asking mm -hmm. these questions because I think a lot of both young parents, a lot of people are interested in this program. Mm -hmm. And this will actually give them a short glimpse of what uh, both the kids can look towards for now and possibly for the future. Right. Pirates. Okay? It all starts here. It all starts within you. Now, I cannot fix the people that are out there. I cannot, I cannot change them. Like us, too. We cannot change them. But what can we do is change ourselves. And the way we can change ourselves is by doing and following the bylaws that kickstart. Our program, American Karate Kai, gives to you. We're going to switch it up. What lesson did this tell you to find a watch? Explain. The lesson is saying that no matter how important the item may be, you shall be patient. You shall be patient and you shall will be, you will be rewarded for your patience. Rose, what bylaw does it say? Always be very patient in the process of acquiring this powerful knowledge. Give you everything you need. Okay, now give me an example of what you need. What do you need? Daily life, what do you need? Now what we're having today is uh our promotions for our color belts. There's no uh, black belt testing tonight, but for all our color belts, brown belts and below, uh, they've been working for the last six months or so. So, you know, they, uh, they're they being tested. And then tonight, if they do pass their tests, we already had one part of it on uh, Tuesday night, but tonight, if they pass, what will happen is they will uh, be awarded their new belt and the certificate that goes with it. Okay, so that's what we're doing tonight. It's a promotion. It's a big. It's a big event for everybody here.
Can I have your name, please? Melissa. And uh, can you tell me you're a brown belt in karate? So how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for about eight years. Eight years? Yes, ever since I was six. Six years old. Wow. Yeah. So, so what uh, grade are you, just out of curiosity? I'm currently eighth grade. You're eighth grade and you're brown belt. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what do you like about this program? What, what has, how would you say, um, has made a difference as far as your perspective in life? So ever since I've started going to Aina Haina to help teach at that dojo, it's karate have, has given me a lot of confidence and it's given me lots of leadership skills. Uh, what, you know, with having to be able to learn karate, uh, what do you see yourself in the future? What would you like to do? Hmm. Well, karate is karate is about the academics. It, they want their students to be well-rounded. Okay. And when I, in the future, I want to have a job in the medical field. So, yeah. so learning the philosophy and being able to do karate is going to really help you as far as planning for the future, as far as your discipline. Yes. Okay. Well, we want to thank you so much for answering all these questions. Thank you. Have your name, please. My name is Jesse Ignacio. Okay. What do you like about this program, Kid Start? Um, the challenges. So, going to the next belt and training hard. What kind of challenges, as far as that you see, that how would you say is important to you, as far as what you want to do? Um, being my best and um, helping the younger ones and being a good example. So you were able to help a lot, a lot of, and teach some of the younger, younger students and everything, right? And if someone asks you, what grade are you, just out of curiosity? Seventh. Seventh grade, and you're a brown belt. Have you ever thought what you would like to be when you grow up? Mm, mechanic. A mechanic? What kind of mechanic? Cars. Cars, so you like cars. Okay. Well, uh, we want to thank you very much for being part of this program. My name is Eliana. Okay, and uh, what do you like about being part of the Kickstart program? I like that we get we're given an opportunity to train hard and uh -huh. become better people. Yeah. And if someone asks you to become better people, how would you describe what a better people is? Through like through character, by our guidance class, uh -huh. by one of our senseis, and by using, learning these martial arts to defend ourselves, like if someone were to attack us uh -huh. on the streets. So if someone, so you feel confident that you have some kind of skill to defend yourself against. Yes. Right. Okay. Now, do you ever think about what you'd like to do when you maybe graduate from uh, high school? And I would like to go to college, to go to med school, and to become a doctor to help more people. That's great. Well, we want to thank you very much for being part of this program. Thank you. Great. Can I have your name, please? Uh, my name is Lolito De La Cruz Jr., but my friends call me LJ for short. So do you like being part of the program as far as Kickstart? Yes. What do you like about it? Uh, I get to learn discipline and self-defense in, in the class that they teach me. And I also get to learn kata which makes me kind of happy because I get to learn things each day. So you get to learn a lot of different things as being part of the program. So do you like learning different things? Yes, like my grabbing methods, charts. But the thing I like most learning is my kata. Really? Why is that? Because the senseis always focus on our kata, our stances, our uh, our key man and lots of other stuff. If you were to explain someone that doesn't know what kata means, what would you say? How would you explain what kata means? Uh, I'll explain them. A uh, kata is something that... Uh... Could you demonstrate a kata? Okay, show me a kata, just out of curiosity. Like, show you a yeah, kata? Yeah, sure, go ahead. So one of my katas are called Hanaku and Ka. Okay. So they go like... 
one, two. Very good. Thank you. We want to thank Lee Donahue and his instructors and all the people that help support the Kickstart program. As you know, the Kickstart program has made a big difference to our kids today. Life Treasure is about people that have made a difference in our community. And we want to wish you the very best for today.